So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Amazon Echo's newest device, the Amazon Echo Show. Essentially, this is an Amazon Echo with a 7-inch touchscreen added. It sells for $230, which is 50 bucks more than the regular Amazon Echo. Now, I'm personally a little skeptical of what adding a touchscreen to the Echo really brings to the table. But what I wanted to do in this review is use the product over the next few days and determine how much extra benefit and usefulness the screen brings to the overall experience of the device. Now, I'm not going to cover all the regular functions the Amazon Echo is capable of, as I've done that pretty in depth in some of my other videos. But instead, I wanted to demo for you the specific things I've found to be most useful after having used it over the last several days and just show and see how having a screen on the device compares to not having one at all. So let's get it hooked up in the kitchen, take a little closer look at the show and see if the touchscreen is a natural evolution of the Echo or just an unnecessary add-on. So here's the Echo show up close. It's a couple things to point out. It's a 7 inch screen. The resolution is 1024 by 600 and it's plenty sharp. You can see there's not too much I mean, you can't really notice any aliasing or, or blocky text or anything like that. It looks, it's a really nice screen. There's two two inch speakers in the front here. And then across the top, you have your volume controls and the mute button. And then these are all your microphones around here. Um, and you can see it's pretty thick right here and that helps it to not really tip over too easily. So it's got a robust base. And then in the back, there's just one plug for the AC adapter there. And there's no audio out, which is a little bit of a bummer. All right, so once you have the device all hooked up, you're basically presented with two screens, which Amazon calls home cards. So the first home card shows you your time and temperature outside, and then it has some suggestions on what the device can do. And unfortunately, you can't turn that off at this point in time, but hopefully they'll be able, you'll be able to replace that or just disable it. And then the second screen, it cycles through back and forth between the two, is it will show you just random articles from trending topics, and these come from Amazon, so don't expect any kind of cutting edge journalism there. But it will suggest, um, you know, interesting little articles, and sometimes it will suggest videos as well. And what you do is, at any time something comes up that it's on here, you see the white word bolded, and that just means it's a keyword. So you can ask it to tell you about that keyword, or you can just tap the screen and it will just show it to you. Now, if you if you ask it to show you about this keyword, so you can say, Alexa, tell me about the bloggers. An Instagram account called you did not. All right, and then it will just you know. It will just read out the article for you. And like I said, they're only, it's like a short paragraph usually, so it's nothing really long. Now the videos can be a couple minutes, um, and I'll demo some of that, the video abilities later, but that's essentially what you get with just the default couple screens. Now you can add certain home cards, like your calendar events, so where it will scroll through that and show you what's coming up in your day, which is pretty cool. And you can imagine, you know, down the road, they're gonna be adding um, certain skills where you can add your own personal cards. So I think that's gonna be a really cool feature. Now, as far as usability compared to the regular Echo, uh, I found just having the screen on is really cool because when it shows you these random clips, when I come in the kitchen, I find myself, when I'm getting water or whatever, I'll look over here and see what's kind of going on and I'll tap it if it's interesting. Versus when I had the regular Echo, the old Echo just in here without the screen, I wouldn't really ask it anything unless I'm just trying to do something specific. But this kind of just gives you something interesting to look at while you're standing around the kitchen and you know, have extra minute or so and just want to check out some article. So I, I found that to be really a pretty cool feature. Uh, so you can say, you know, Alexa, like tell me about Spider-Man Homecoming and it will show the trailer. So you can just tap that and then it's going to show you kind of Spider-Man trailer on YouTube or wherever else it is. It might be on Amazon, however it pops up. Um, Alexa, home. So I think that's pretty cool. So the other thing is this doesn't stay, the screen doesn't stay on all the time. It will dim and stuff um, according to the ambient lighting in the room. And what's cool is it will go to sleep after a couple minutes, so you don't have to worry about it just always on. Um, it has motion sensing in it, so when you walk by, the screen will just come back on, so you don't have to wake it with a tap. Um, and when it does go to sleep, it just goes to a black background, and it shows a very dim clock um, in the corner. So that's kind of neat that it's not just always glaring some bright screen in your dark rooms. All right, so that's it as far as the basics of what it does when it just sits there. Um, what I want to show you now is... The different things that I use my Echo, or you might use your Echo for, but where the screen really adds something. So the first thing is um, shopping list. Uh, Alexa, show me my shopping list. Here's your shopping list. Now, I don't really like using the shopping list because you can't rearrange it, so it kind of makes it impractical to uh, shop for it in the store. You can't rearrange it in an app still. They haven't added that functionality, which is ridiculous. But anyways, if you do use it, it's kind of nice to be able to pull it up there and add it. Okay, but anyway, the other thing is what's really awesome is I've showed in using the Amazon Echo before. Ordering items is a little bit of a pain in the butt. You try to order something and it will read some long description. Alexa, buy some Crest toothpaste. Crest toothpaste. 
Crest 3D White looks wide strips professional effects. Teeth whitening kit 20 treatments. The order total is $41.76. Should I order it? No. Um, you're not really sure what the sizes are and things like that, but with this device, it's freaking great. So you can say, Alexa, order toothpaste. Okay. So what's cool is now you can actually scroll through this, see your sizes, see the specific prices without having to like listen and remember all the things it's telling you. So this is freaking awesome. As soon as you hit, as soon as you hit purchase, it will just buy it instantly. So I'll have to just tap that and it will purchase. So let me show you another example. Uh, Alexa, order a Rolex watch. Got it. So you can just be like, oh yeah, this $3,000 item, buy it. But you got to be careful because it will instantly uh, order process placed. your order. By the way. Now you can see, I mean, just the ordering function with the screen is just, is way better than just the regular Amazon Echo. So I think that's a really huge added benefit. The other thing is weather, of course. Alexa, weather. In Marietta, it's 82 degrees with intermittent. All right, so you know, the regular Echo, uh, you know, I'm sure you've seen before, it's going to tell you a little bit about the weather. But this is cool because it adds a little bit of... Um, extra information where you can swipe to see the highs and lows, a little weekly forecast, and um, some other precipitation and other weather info. So, you know, that adds definitely adds a little bit of functionality there. All right, so the other thing is with timers. You can see once you set a timer, it shows it on here, which is definitely more convenient than your regular Echo without the, without the screen. And the other thing, too, is you can pull up all your timers. Alexa, show me my timers. Here are your timers. So being able to see the timer in there is uh, slightly a little more useful than just having to ask it how much time is left. The other thing, of course, is um, with the calendar. Alexa, show my calendar. Here's what's on the calendar. And you can add and delete events, just like the regular Echoes. Uh, but I think here having the visual screen is pretty useful. Alexa, add doctor's appointment tomorrow at 2 p.m. to my calendar. That's doctor's appointment on Saturday, July 8th at 2 p.m., right? Yep. Okay, I've added that. And then what you can do is if you go into the settings, you can add that as a card to where it shows your upcoming events. Uh, so you can see there's three dots now and then there's the middle dot, which is uh, your counter upcoming appointments, which is pretty neat. Uh, of course you can tap here and it will show it to you. And then there you go. And it's easy enough to delete the items as well. Um, Alexa, de delete my doctor's appointment tomorrow at 2 p.m. Delete doctor's appointment at 2 p.m. for tomorrow. Right? Yes. Okay, done. All right, so that, that's pretty cool, I think. Definitely a screen adds something there. Now the other thing that's I really found useful is reminders. So on the regular Echoes, you can ask it to set reminders, but it will just beep the reminder from whatever device you set the reminder from. So if you set the reminder in a dot in the bedroom or your regular Echo in the living room, the reminder is gonna show up just on that device. And it's only gonna ring twice within a short period of time. So if you're not in that room and you miss that reminder, it's basically useless. Alexa, remind me to take out the trash at 9.29 a.m. Okay, I'll remind you at 9.29 a.m. This is a reminder. Take out the trash. This is a reminder. Take out the trash. Now reminders on the Echo Show work a lot better than the regular Echo because you get the visual display and what's cool is the reminder doesn't go away until you physically dismiss it so you'll never, it makes sure you basically never miss a reminder. And if you have two reminders or more than one reminder and they overlap each other, say you miss one, um, once you dismiss it, when you dismiss the most recent one it will show you the other ones that you missed. So you're sure to never miss a reminder and, and so with having the screen it just works a lot better. Alexa, remind me to take out the trash at 10.30 a.m. Okay, I'll remind you at 10.30 a.m. Alexa, remind me to call my dad at 10.31 a.m. Okay, Alexa, I'll remind home. you at... This is a reminder. Take out the trash. So you can see this is a lot better than the regular Echo, which just has a couple chimes with the reminder and then just goes away. Here, you, it just keeps showing the screen until you dismiss it. This is a reminder. Call my dad. So see how this newer reminder overwrites the other one. In case you were to miss the other one and you just came in here and saw this, once you dismiss this, it shows you the other one you missed. So to me that works a lot better. It's pretty cool. So one thing I've used the Echo Show screen is to see movie times. Alexa, movie times. Here are a few movies playing near Marietta. 
and you can watch the trailer or just cl actually click the show times or you can say show times um, and then it will show you the time so I you probably think well you can just use your phone that's yeah, true but sometimes when you're in your kitchen it, it, it is pretty handy I've found and then there is things where the screen isn't really essential but it does add a little bit of visual feedback so for example Alexa call me an uber there is an uber x five minutes away from your Alexa address should I order nope all right, so you can see at least that shows you kind of what's going on, how many minutes away. And actually, once you do call it, it will tell you how many minutes away the vehicle's from. So it doesn't show you a map or anything like that. But there's a lot of different functions that you can imagine this, where the screen's gonna show you some information, though it's not necessarily 100% essential. So the other thing is this does have a five megapixel camera in the front. Uh, so you can do show to show, echo show to another echo show video calling. I'm not gonna demo that, but first of all, I don't know anybody else with one. Um, but you can imagine it's just video calling essentially. Uh, what I don't like about it is you can just use Skype or FaceTime. What I think is a lot more useful because you can adjust the camera. Here's a fixed camera position, so you know you can take that for what's worth. If you think you would use the show to show calling, it works. But what I do want to mention is they added a feature called drop in, which is a little bit it's interesting because you can have somebody drop into this camera and within five seconds they're seeing they're seeing what's going on in this camera. Now of course you can adjust that all in the privacy settings. So it's not a huge deal. So you can adjust that here. So you can have it just be people in your household. You can completely turn it off or just, you can adjust it for individual contacts as well. Um, what I do like the drop-in feature for is to use it as an intercom system. So I can tell it to say, you know, Alexa, drop in the basement dot. Alexa, hang up. So what's cool is you can use that as an intercom system. So I can tell people, you know, dinner's ready or what do they want from the kitchen or anything like that. And it works a lot better than screaming across the house. Alexa, drop in on the bedroom dot. What are you doing? Can you hear me? What are you doing? Nah, it's like an intercom system now. They got all these on this, these uh, echoes. What is that screen down there? It's just for seeing stuff. Well, if you had a camera upstairs, I could see what you were doing. Ew. <laughs> Mommy. All right, come get some food. Dinner's ready. Right. And you can rename, you don't have to say dot, you can rename your devices. I have echoes all around the house, so I can say, you know, drop in the living room, drop in the bedroom, things like that. So I found that to be a pretty, pretty cool feature. But like I say, if you're worried about you know, I've, a lot of comments, people worried about the microphones on the echoes, like people eavesdropping when you can imagine what they'll feel like with the video camera. So just something to just kind of keep in mind. One of the other things you can use this screen for is if you have echo compatible security cameras or nursery cams, or if you have like the ring doorbell that has a camera in your front doorbell, you can just call it up, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, I don't really have any to demo that for you, but you can imagine the usefulness of that uh, using the screen. So you could, you know, ask it to you know, show me my front door, show me the nursery, it'd be pretty sweet. Now the five megapixel camera here, you know, I talk about what you can use it for and dropping in and stuff like that. What you can use it for is like a reverse security camera. So if you have this, let's say in the kitchen, I can call, drop into this device from my phone and see what's going on on the camera, which I'll show you here. So here I'm at outside and say I wanna see what's going on in the kitchen. I can just drop in the uh, Echo Show. And Nobody needs to answer or anything. You see after five seconds, it will just come into focus. And you'll be able to see what is going on in your kitchen. A whole lot of nothing right now. So anyways, that's kind of how the drop-in video feature works. Obviously with the screen, you have access to a lot of video functions. And one of the main ones being is if you're a Prime member, you can pull up movies from Amazon Prime Videos and all their original TV shows if you are into any of their specific TV shows. And so it's really easy to play a movie in the background if you wanted to. So, Alexa, play a movie. Here's 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. And the voice controls work really well. Um, Alexa, fast forward 30 minutes. And the current destabilization of Syria. Um, yes. You know, or you can scrub it here, you know, however you wanted to do it. And then you can pause it if you like. And of course you can pull up specific movies. So Alexa, play the movie Iron Man. Here's Iron Man. Alexa, pause. All right, again, if you watch TV shows, you can have it pull up specific TV shows. 
Um, Alexa, play Goliath Season 1, Episode 2. Here's Season 1, Episode 2. Alexa, pause. Alexa, show me all the episodes of The Man in the High Castle. Here's what I found. And then, of course, you can play your episodes like that. So, that's pretty neat. I guess if you wanted to watch a movie in the background or something, I can't imagine watching a whole two-hour movie or even a 30-minute full-length TV show on this little seven-inch screen. So, I don't really think that is very that practical, but, you know, it's there if you want to pull something up. Uh, what I found to be more useful on this device for video is being able to watch YouTube videos. And that works really well. So, Alexa, show me Warren Buffett interviews on YouTube. Here's what I found from YouTube. And then you know you can go in here and just play one if you want. Alexa, pause. Alexa, back. Um, you can also pull a specific, uh, a specific channel if you really like, you know, something. Let's say, um, Alexa, show me MKBHD videos on YouTube. Here's what I found from YouTube. Um, and then you can select one, and, or you can scroll through and find a video you really like. Alexa, stop. So that is pretty neat. Um, now obviously interviews and certain just random videos on YouTube are kind of a little bit more functional in the kitchen because you don't have to give it your undivided attention. You can just listen to it and glance over kind of, you know, when you need to. So I think YouTube's really, really awesome. Now unfortunately what is really crappy is there's no way to pull up a search function. So I've tried to pull up keyboards and stuff and it just doesn't really let you. So if you have trouble sometimes select, you know, asking for specific YouTube videos or channels. A lot of times you have to spell it out or it just gets a little bit clunky. And so hopefully they'll, I really, really hope they'll add a keyboard function to the YouTube app. It will really make it a lot better to use. And then you can definitely ask, let's say if you want to play music videos, Alexa, show me Chris Brown music videos. Here's what I found from YouTube. So this is kind of cool because if you want to just play music videos in the kitchen or in the bathroom when you're getting ready, it's, it's pretty sweet. Um, I really like music, watching music videos a lot, so to me that's a really pretty killer feature. So you know, watching YouTube is just it works really great. So I noticed in the app that there's a there's a a skill called Dish uh, TV, and it says or Dish Network or Dish TV here, um, but it says you can tune into ESPN, which tells me you can probably watch channels. Now, unfortunately, I don't have Dish Network to be able to try this out, but. If you can pull up a lot of the different channels you get with your Dish Network subscription, that's going to be awesome. And you can imagine they'll expand this to other providers as well. So most certainly DirecTV and Comcast and all these other cable companies because I think that's really the way that everything's going. You should be able to just pull up TV channels on this. And then it's just, you know, unbelievably useful in my opinion. Especially if you're in the bathroom getting ready to watch some news uh, videos in the morning or channels like that. Now, one thing I did notice is when I enabled a Bloomberg skill on this, you can get, actually just get the Bloomberg TV channel. Now, probably most of you guys don't really watch that or care about that, but I noticed by enabling that skill in here, it was able to let me pull it up, although it's a little bit weird because you have to ask to pull it up twice. So let me just kind of demo, demo that for you here. Alexa, show me Bloomberg TV. Welcome to Bloomberg. You can hear Bloomberg Alexa, play Market Bloomberg Mo TV. For now. It, it, so is, is it's it, a little bit annoying because you have to ask it twice. And there you go, it's a TV channel on here, Bloomberg. And this is the regular TV channel. I confirmed it by going downstairs and watching it on Sling TV. It's the same exact feed. It's even better because this doesn't show commercials. It shows uh, stock ticker screens uh, in, between, in between segments. So I think that is really awesome. All right, there is one really cool feature that I think is probably one of the most underrated features of the Amazon Echo is just the fact that you can use this as a digital photo frame. And the way you do that is you download the Amazon, the Prime Photo app, and you can upload all your photos in there, and you can create folders and things like that. You can check it out, it's a free app, but if you're a Prime member, you have unlimited photo storage, which is pretty nice. Um, but all you have to do to change it is you go into the background here, go to Change Prime Photos, and you can see you can select different folders. It will um, show you photos based on certain locations if you want. You can have family photos share so you can share it from different devices. Um, you can have it put photos from this same day in, in prior years. You can have it do all photos. So we'll just scroll through all your photos in the background, which is really pretty neat. And I made just a quick Echo Show one here to kind of demonstrate it. 
and you know there it is so you know it really just personalizes the Amazon Echo a lot more than just the regular wallpapers and it looks really cool the other thing to note is if you have take pictures in portrait mode it will blur the bars on the side so it fills in the frame really nicely so it doesn't look uh, real jank and uh, yeah that's that's one of the really underrated features I think so anyways that's that's the uh, wallpaper app I, I think it's really cool and then one other thing that you can do with it is in the home screen if you want to select uh, the Alexa app photo you can just have a single photo be in the background which is you know I just put a logo on here real quick doesn't really look that great but um, you set that in the Amazon app you can just pick which uh, default photo to set it to all right so the last thing I want to briefly cover is just the music ability now of course you've probably seen from other Amazon Echo reviews or whatever you can call up music and that's fine but with the Echo it adds a couple of little different things so if you play something from the Amazon music library it will show you lyrics uh, Alexa play Taylor Swift on Amazon music Shuffling songs by Taylor down Swift. So I don't get a copyright strike, but you can see. Let's just fast forward it there. Um, you can t toggle on and off lyrics, which is pretty cool if you like sing a sing along or just see what the lyrics are for a song or rapping, or if you have kids that like to karaoke, it's kind of cool. And then it scrolls it along with the music, so that's pretty nice. Um, so that's Amazon Music, and then you can just kind of see here. It just adds a nice visual element to when you're listening to music. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have an audio output, which is a bit of a bummer. So the, to me, it works good in a singular room where you want a little bit of music. It's not going to, you know, base out your your house or anything like that. But you can have it in the bathroom if you when you take a shower and want to listen to music. is pretty cool. Just call out songs, um, you know, and you can vocally just skip songs if a crappy song comes up. So I think that's that's really neat. And you know, just having album artwork is cool. Not only lyrics, but you can see with Pandora, it's going to display artwork, which again, just adds a nice visual element when you're listening to music. And then finally on Spotify, of course, you can play everything now. In Spotify, I'll just show you here. I have, you know, you can pull up by artist and album, but I never remember album names and, and let alone specific songs. But what I do is I keep a ton of different playlists here. You can call up all these playlists just by you know, with the Echo Show, which is cool. So let's say I wanted to pull up uh, my current playlist. Uh, Alexa, play my current playlist on Spotify. Current from Spotify. It will eventually change over here. So there you go. You get the you get the pretty cool um, album artwork, which is nice. You can obviously scrub across songs, or you can voice control as well. Alexa, pause. And that's music. So again, just adding the album artwork, artwork I think, is, is pretty sweet. Um, now that's it. Uh, what I want to do is now, just the last thing here is I'm going to test the speakers for you here against a regular Amazon Echo so you can tell the difference. The Echo Show does sound slightly better. Uh, part of the reason is because it has the, the two two-inch speakers in the front and then part of the width here is for the speaker. Um, I don't know what it's called. just gives a little bit of a sound chamber so it boosts some of the bass a little. And uh, here, you'll just be able to tell for yourself. We are going to start with the uh... Echo Show again on the left, and they're all at full volume, so we're just going to cycle through them. First device will be the Show on the left, then the Echo in the middle, and then the Google Home on the right. Oh, my God. 
that's my rundown of the new Echo Show. I have to admit, I didn't think adding a screen to the Amazon Echo would really bring that much benefit, but it definitely adds a lot of features to an already awesome device and one that I rely on for multiple times a day. Now, I'm sure they'll add to it as time goes on as well, like hopefully adding manual search functions in YouTube or expanding the TV channel capabilities. And if you're trying to decide between this and a regular Echo, I'd highly recommend getting this one. The touchscreen just adds a lot more for a little more money, and in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. And if you're adding to an already expanding Echo family, this is one that definitely deserves a place in your home. So there are links to all the Echo products in the description. If you click on those, it definitely helps the channel out, and hopefully I'll be able to get a new mic so the videos don't sound so whack. And don't forget to subscribe if you like the video, thumbs up and share it. Thanks a lot for watching. You guys take care. Alexa, rap for me. My name is Alexa and I'm here to say, I'm the baddest AI in the cloud today. Your responses are fast, but mine are faster. Sucker speech engines, they call me master. Alexa, stop.